In this demonstration, working with parameters, we're going to enhance the salesperson directory with various parameter scenarios. Here's the report that was developed in a previous demonstration. Let's preview it to remind ourselves what it looks like. Okay, so it presents an entire list of the salesperson directory. I see we have page one of five. And yet what we're gonna do is parameterize this to allow the user to filter down to what is of interest to them in the report. So I'll switch back to design. We notice in the report data pane that there are no parameters. And so I'm going to right click the DS main data set and I'm going to open up directly to the query. Actually, no, let me open the properties. Let's remind ourselves about the statement. There is a where clause that is simply filtering where the salesperson flag is true. Now what I'll do is open up the query designer and remember that we have support for parameterization. The plan here is that we want to produce the report for a single employee. So I'm going to add a new filter based on the employee key and I'm going to parameterize it. And as simple as that, when I click OK, look at the modification that's been made to the query where employee key equals the query parameter employee key. Now watch what happens when I click OK. A report parameter was created automatically. Let me reopen the data set and its properties and take a look here in the parameters pane where we see a mapping of the query parameter to what is an expression to the report parameter. So this is the way that we can filter through. Let's test it. Employee key. Hmm. Can you remember an employee key for an employee? I cannot. I cannot either. This is a bad design, but let's, let's improve it in some moments. I got a feeling that 298. Nope. Uh, 289. Yes, David Campbell. All right, so what we've got is a report parameter value being mapped to the data set query parameter and there's phase one of the design. Well, clearly there's a deficiency in the design, isn't there, Chris? Yes. <laughs> because we have to have an excellent memory, and in fact, an employee key is probably something that most people wouldn't memorize. Let's then move on and improve the layout. Let's take a look. We've got employee key sitting up here as a parameter. So I'm going to open up the parameter properties and first of all make the improvement that the prompt will become just salesperson. All right. And the next consideration will be for available values. Now, we could define a static list of salespeople, but that's not a smart design. We'd rather retrieve them from a data set. So let me switch that back to none for the moment. Click OK. We see that the salesperson prompt has updated here in the parameter pane. And now it prompts me to, in fact, create an entirely new data set. All right, so what I'll do is this. I'm going to right-click the data source and I'm going to add a data set and provide a unique name of DS, and I guess I'll call this DS salesperson. Rather than type in the query, for this demo I'm going to demo the import capability, and so we'll find that we've got the ability just to import from a SQL file. So I've got my DS salesperson one, and uh, this query here is retrieving two columns, the employee key the salesperson name that's been formatted with an upper la last name, coming from the employee table where the salesperson flag is true and it's being ordered by salesperson name. No query parameters. And now I have a second data set added to the report. And I come back and I edit my report parameter and I configure the available values to use that data set. Mapping the employee key to the value field and the salesperson name to the label. Let's see if it improves the experience. Now we have a drop-down list, and I'm able to choose any of the employees and view the report. Now while we're at this point, the report isn't terribly self-describing. Remember that we have the subtitle text box, and now is the time to edit the expression for this text box and ask it to use from our parameters the employee key parameter not the value, we don't want to see the numeric key, we'd like to see the label. And now when we run the report and choose any of the employees, we'll see the subtitle is reflecting the selected parameter. Nice.
All right, so what do you think, Chris? I think that's great. I think it's a really helpful tip in terms of that subtitle piece because that's something that often new, new report authors aren't aware that they can do as a simple way, especially when you think about the distribution scenarios. Right. And uh, the next improvement then might be, well, why can't we just have the report run immediately? Yes. And, uh, and that's where we'd say, yes, we can do this. That's just a default for the report parameter. So returning to the report parameter window, the third page is for default values. And again, we could have a specific value that could be static, or it could also be based on an expression. That's and right. Remember, for time-based, and it's quite common, you know, what date period do we want to look at um, sales? Well, then we can use expressions that are based on current date and time. Mm -hmm. We can also assign data sets to default. So let's see what happens if we use the salesperson data set and map the employee key to become the default. Because there's a default, we're going to see the report runs immediately. And do you notice that it's actually selected the first item in the list? I did. While the data set is actually representing all of those rows, um, if you do that and it's a single select parameter, right. then it will select the first one in the list. Yeah, so you need to be careful there, especially if you're thinking about using a default parameter. It's a great way to, it's a great way to actually have the report run for users and make it simple for them to get started. Be very careful. <laughs> that you're not using a set of parameters that uh, or a data set that needs to be whittled down before it will perform well for you because I know oftentimes people put a default parameter in there and want to look at a billion rows of data. And maybe right. it makes sense to have users go and select some parameter values so it only is bringing back the data you need. In that case, what they might be able to do is at least do yes, this. Yes, they can stop. <laughs> they could stop. All right, but, but it might be too late and it's yeah. like... So just be careful. Default values can be good, they can be bad. Yes. It's just a circumstantial thing. Yep. Um, the next improvement might be that selecting a single employee is a little strange. Let's give them the option to either have all of them or a single one. Yeah, this is a common ask. So that has me return to the salesperson data set. And uh, I'm going to import an improved query. And that improved query will be, what do we have? We've got uh, four assets, salesperson two. So, here we see two select statements working together. Here's the injection, so to speak, of an artificial row with a key minus one and the label all salespeople. We union that to the original select statement. So in fact, there's no need to change the parameter. We just see an extra row turning up at the top. And it's defaulting, but that's where we need to be careful because there is, in fact, no employee with a key minus one. So that has us return to our main data set, and I'm going to import an updated version, which is the DS main number one. Da, da, da. That's the one. Here we go. So originally it was give us all of the employees that have a salesperson key of one. Now we have this where the employee key equals the query parameter or that query parameter equals minus one. Let's see how it works. Run the report. By default, remember the default is selecting the first item, and we see that we've got five pages of all the, of the salespeople. And now if I just request a single, we get that single. Nice. Yeah. So it's a fairly simple arrangement to put together. Now, let's move on to, I think, the more interesting topic. I just love cascading parameters. They're, they're almost in every report that I write. They're invaluable. And so what we're going to do is adjust it now that rather than presenting an available list of all salespeople, that uh, they first get to choose which sales territory group, and then we get to see the salespeople from that group. All right, so uh, what I will do is I'll edit the query for the salesperson data set, and I'm going to import a revised version. This feels like cheating. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we have limited time, both in presentation, and I'm sure our viewers have got better things to do, like write awesome reports. That's true. So I'm going to bring in salesperson version 3. OK, so let's have a better look at this. What do we have? We still have the unioning arrangement here to bring in all salespeople. We've got all salespeople, but with a query parameter here that is going to filter by a sales territory group. Now remember that when you update a query with a new query parameter, watch what happens. Here we see the addition of a report parameter. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so we know that it needs some available values. So before I configure that parameter, I'm going to right click the data source. I'm going to add a new data set that's going to retrieve all of the sales territory groups. Sorry, Chris, I'm going to cheat again. <laughs> <laughs> I just said it feels like cheating. I didn't say it was actually cheating. So here I have a data set query for the sales territory group. Very straightforward. Just give me the distinct sales territory groups from the sales territory table. Um, note that we don't have a key column here. There's no key column for group, and that's fine. Uh, when we configure the available values for the sales territory group. So firstly, I'm going to rename this as group. There's the prompt. Come to the available values, set that our new data source and that that sales territory group is both the value and the label. That's perfectly fine. We make sure that they're in the correct order. Sales territory group, then employee key. In fact, I might prefer by dragging salesperson that they're running vertical. Hmm. Choose the group, then you can choose the salesperson. All right, this label might need to explain what's happening. Okay, so what I'd like to do is this. I'm going to open up a snippet file for this lab. And I've got an expression here. Let me copy it in and then I'll describe it to you. So I'm going to modify the expression of this text box to do this. Give me the sales territory group parameters value concatenate and the IIF is conditional. If the employee key value is minus one, then return empty string. Otherwise, return the label of the employee key. Now, I want you to notice that salesperson is disabled. Mm -hmm. It has a dependency on group. I'm going to go ahead and choose North America to see a list of the North American salespeople. And watch what happens when I choose Europe. There's a list of the European salespeople. If I choose all salespeople, we just get Europe as the label. Nice. Yeah, if I choose a single one, like JPAC, then our expression returns both Europe and the fact that we've filtered on the individual JPAC. Nice. Yeah. No, I really do love this topic, Chris. I know, I can tell. <laughs> and I can see the paginated report there is his furs standing on end. It's not my favorite, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, have you ever noticed that your report users are never completely satisfied? You do these amazing cool things and they're like, yeah, but what about multi-select? Usually I take that as a good sign, that the user likes it so much they want more <laughs> versus they just don't provide any feedback, which means they didn't use it. Well, let's return to um, the report design. And uh, turning on multi-select is a trivial thing to do yes. from the point of view of the report parameter. So I'm going to edit the employee key and I'm going to allow multi-selection of the employee key. Mm -hmm. All right. Now remember that's going to require consideration for our main data set because at the moment it's using this type of logic. All right, where the employee key equals a specific employee key or... Now this probably won't work well if we've got an all salesperson in there as well, will it? Probably not. Probably not. So now that I think about it, uh, what we'll do is we will come to our available values for salesperson and we'll remove that artificial one because they can now multi-select. They don't need that. So what we're going to get back is one or more keys of valid salespeople. So in DS main, what we want to do is adjust the employee key. I'm not going to cheat this time, Chris. I'm going to say it's in employee key. And remember, the in operator expects a comma-separated list, and Power BI will pass through a comma-separated list of the multi-selected items. Oh, nice. All right, but what does it mean for the expression? Ooh, what's going on? You have to provide a <laughs> default. I have to provide a default. Or some sort of value because it's requiring it. Okay, but I think it accepted it anyway. Let's see what happens. What does it mean for our expression up here? It means it'll change. Mm. Well, the expression was expecting a single employee, yes. not an array. So let's see what happens. <laughs> Fingers crossed, we go in here and say, okay, give me North America. And now look at this, multi-selection. Why is it that all of the salespeople are already selected? 
Because of the way you set up your default values. Correct, because the default is mapped to the data set. Now maybe that's a good thing or not, I don't know, but I'm happy to leave it for now, in which case I can then easily subtract what I don't want. In fact, it might be easier to use Europe and say I just want um, JPAC and run it. Let's go ahead and run. Ooh. Well, let's use this now as a way that we troubleshoot errors. That's right. And so it doesn't like the semicolon that I've got within the query for DSMA. Okay, well that targets the problem. Let's see what I've done. I'm a semicolon person, so I've got a feeling it just doesn't want that. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be very careful. Well, let's see, and it says, I still don't like it. Could not update a list of fields for the query. You know, this might be why, Chris, I like to import. <laughs> Yes. Because <laughs> I know that it works. <laughs> All right, so I think I need to come here and it's assets and I'm doing something like, what would it be, DS main 3? Well, that looks pretty much like what I had before. Let's see. It likes it this time. All right, so where were we? We were looking at European salespeople. And I was going to subtract one of them and then run. I'm enjoying this exercise simply because this is helps me reinforce to my engineers that I work with why people so enjoy the graphical designers versus handwriting their SQL queries. Well, why is it that we're getting an error here? Well, you didn't change the expression to properly reflect the change in the parameters. Exactly, right. So the expression was expecting a single value for the label here. Okay, now where it's not a single value, it's an array. Mm -hmm. And the way that we can work with that is we can use the join function. And the join will take an array and we will tell it how to separate them and build a single string. So what I've done here is I've wrapped the label into join and I've added this parameter to say produce a string that comma space separates them. Let's see how it works. Again for Europe, eliminating one of them, view. Ooh. Well done. Okay. Okay, Chris, what have I done wrong? Ah, we also have this minus one going on here. So I guess that's my problem. We can't be testing for this. An array can't equal minus one. Exactly. So probably this. That's better. Oh, but I think I had a trailing parentheses that I probably want to get rid of as well. You do love your parentheses. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, products like this are very specific. Yes, well, we talked about not, that in an earlier module. Not too module. many, not too few. No, well, we talked about that in an earlier module. You have to be careful. And there we see it. Ta-da. Comma separated values. What if I selected all of them? And notice that multi gives us a select all. That isn't coming from our query. When you enable available values for a multi-select parameter, you get an automatic select all. And it's really just a convenience. Mm -hmm. On or off, on or off. And if I select all of them, you know, that's going to become problematic for North America. Let's see an example of a text box that grows yep. as it needs to. So the logic would probably be better using this snippet. And have a look at this logic here that says, if the count of multi-select parameters equals the number of rows in DS cells person, then we don't need to comma separate them because exactly. we know they're all from the group. All right. Otherwise, go ahead and join and give us a list of them. So let me copy this snippet, and then we'll finalize that design. Okay, so I'll use North America. If I select all, then I should just get North America. If I should just remove one of them, then I'm going to get the list of them. That's working with parameters, Chris, what do you think? I think you kept me on my toes during that particular session. There you go. So there's a lot of room for creativity and for delivering an experience that is most convenient and suitable for your report users.